Are you living for Jesus? Well, have you ever considered the fact that Christ might want to live by means of you? Which is a reversal of the thinking that we may have had about what it means to be Christian. Well, welcome to Life as God Intended. I'm Don. Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast where we'll be discussing the topic of Christ living by means of us. That's right. Christ living by means of you. And this title embraces the idea of the Christian's union life, which we'll be discussing in more detail. Christ in us, Christ as us, and Christ through us. So with no further ado, let's get into it. What does the statement Christ living by means of us mean? Well, we will consider these three phrases that express the reality of what it means to be a Christian, a Christ one. Christ in us, Christ as us, and Christ through us. So first of all, let's take the phrase Christ in us. This is the one that you're probably most familiar with, where Jesus himself explained that he would give another helper, the spirit of truth, and that his disciples would know that they were in him and that he was in them. You can read about that in John chapter 14 and verse 20. In his prayer for unity, Jesus explained that he would be in his followers in the same way that God the Father was in him the Son. We see that in John's Gospel chapter 17 and verse 23. The Apostle Paul also clearly noted that the mystery of the gospel is Christ in you, the hope of glory, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. He went on to ask the question, almost chiding the Christians of Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, when he asked the question, do you not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you unless you're not a Christian? You see, the essential reality that constitutes being a Christian is not having prayed a prayer, believed a certain belief system, walked an aisle, been baptized. No, the essential reality that constitutes being a Christian is the indwelling presence of the spirit of Christ himself. And that's why Paul declared in Romans chapter eight and verse nine, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him, i.e. is not a Christian. You see, that's what it means that Christ is in us. Secondly, well, there's the slide, there's the presentation, forgot to Put it up there. The essential reality that constitutes being a Christian is the indwelling presence of the Spirit of Christ. Secondly, Christ as us. Now, this may be a, a phrase that you're not as familiar with, and there have been those in the theological community that have been uncomfortable with this phrase. And that's because they have not properly understood the context of it. We are not saying that Christ as us means that somehow Jesus loses his deity when he comes to dwell in us any more than we lose our humanity when he comes to dwell in us. And so the reason that some have been uh, concerned or afraid to use this terminology, Christ as us, is because they have interpreted it as meaning that there has become this union, this essential union, where we become little Christs. And of course, that would be heretical. That is not what this means. Rather, Christ as us is another way of referring to the Christian's union uh, in Christ or with Christ, which is 
been a part of Christian understanding from the very beginning of the church. And what it really refers to is the Christian's union relationship with Christ. So when Christ joined us to himself, we are in spiritual union or spiritual relationship with him. After all, if you're not in relationship, in union with Christ, then what is the Christian life? You see, so Christ as us refers to our identity as Christians by reason of his real spiritual presence, his being, who he is, living in us, indwelling in us. That's why Paul said in Colossians 3, 4, Christ is our life. Christ is our life. And that Christians, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 10, that Christians live together with and through him, 1 John 4, 9. And so Christ became to us righteousness. That's what Paul was declaring once again to the Corinthian believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30, that Christ became to us righteousness. He is righteousness. And so as we are in union with him, we become righteous ones. Not because we don't become inherently righteous. We become righteous because the righteous presence of Christ himself lives within us and wants to express his righteous character through us. So Jesus Christ becomes the basis of the spiritual identity of the Christian. But we must always understand that this is a derived identity, a derived life, a derived righteousness, holiness, perfection. Again, I, I, I must emphasize, these are not realities that we acquired essentially or inheritedly in and of ourselves. These, these, these righteousness, this holiness is only by the presence of Jesus Christ himself who lives within us. And so that's why we read in Acts 13, 14, in Acts 7, 52, and in Acts 22, 14, and in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, that we were made righteous by Christ, the righteous one who dwells and functions in us as Christians. You see, as Christians, we are only said to be holy and perfect because Jesus Christ is the holy one. Acts 3.14, Acts 4, verse 27 and verse 30. You see, the one, that is Jesus Christ, the Holy One, made perfect forever, Hebrews 7, 28. He is the basis of our righteousness. He is the basis of our holiness. He is the basis of our identity. We derive all that we have from him as Christians. And that's very important that you understand that because that's the essence of Christ as us. Lastly, Christ through us. This is the ministry activity of Jesus Christ. How exciting. Think about it. Stop trying to live for God. Allow the indwelling Christ, the life of Christ himself to live through you. Stop trying to do ministry. I'll never forget years ago when I was taught religiously uh, to don't seek a ministry, anticipate the fruit of a disciplined life. Oh, what a lie that was. I'll never forget the night that Jesus began to speak to me about what true ministry looked like. And he said, Don, he says, don't seek a ministry. Anticipate the fruit of your union life in Christ. Oh, that was so liberating. And so true ministry is allowing the indwelling life and activity of Jesus Christ himself to be expressed through you. The, the, ministry act of, the ministry activity of Jesus Christ during his historical and earthly ministry 
was obviously accomplished as the man Christ Jesus. We read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. And it, he was attested as the man by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him. Acts 22, or Acts chapter 2, I should say, in verse 22. But Jesus carefully explained that he did nothing of his own initiative. In other words, this was the Father. This was the Father doing ministry through us, or through him, I should say. You see, that's the corresponding truth. As you begin to recognize that you have the very indwelling presence of Jesus Christ living in you, and that he's come to live in and through you, then you allow for his ministry to be expressed through you. That's the only way you and I know how to do ministry, allowing Jesus to minister his life, his character through us, for others, to his glory, the benefit of others, and we be, are able to participate with that. And so we see that Jesus declared the Father abiding in me does his work in John 14, 10. So again, we ask the same question. How did Jesus do what he did in his earthly ministry? Well, God performed through him. As we saw in Romans 15, is obviously referring to Christ's function through the Christian. It's not what you and I do for God. It's what Christ does through us. And many of us have not understood that. We've, we've missed out on that. And so we see even the miracles and the and the the wonders and the signs which God performed through Jesus Christ were a result of the Father. That's what Luke is saying later when he says in Acts 15, um, chapter chapter 15 and verse 12, he says that the multitudes were listening to Barabbas and Paul as they related the signs and wonders God did through them among the Gentiles. And that's why later, in like manner, Jesus ministered by being receptive to God's activity through him. The apostles ministered in supernatural ways as God functioned through them. As writing uh, to the Romans, Paul explained, I do not presume to speak anything except what Christ accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, in Romans 15, verses 18 and 19. So this is the obvious reference to Christ functioning through the Christian. Christ through us you could say it this way. Christ through us is the extension. Isn't that beautiful? The extension of Christ's ministry through Christians. The objective of that ministry is always Christ giving himself to and for others in us, as us, and through us. What a beautiful understanding of the Christian life. Christ in us has to do with his indwelling presence. Christ as us has to do with our identity. And Christ through us has to do with intercession. Make a note of that. Christ in us, his indwelling presence. Christ as us, our identity in Christ. Christ through us, his intercession through us. What a beautiful thing. You see, the preposition in refers to location. The preposition as refers to function. Stop trying to live the Christian life. Allow Jesus Christ to function through you as your life. And the preposition through refers to extension. 
What a beautiful reality it means to be a Christian, a Christ one. Christ in us points to presence, the real presence of the living Lord Jesus Christ in our spirit. Christ as us suggests identity. His presence establishes our identity as Christ ones. And Christ through us implies extension. Christ's presence functions. Christ's presence and function necessitates his expression through us to others. How beautiful. This is the good news. This is the good news of the Christian gospel that God in Christ has reinvested. He has restored in, as, and through the receptive Christian individual. We are experienced the outlived life of Jesus Christ himself. The spirit of Christ is then free to express the character of Christ in novel and spontaneous ways in each Christian. We're all unique. <laughs> and in each of these novel and spontaneous ways, unto the glory of God, that is the body of Christ, ladies and gentlemen. You see, the spirit of the living Christ is present in the Christian, existing as the identity of the Christian, and functioning to express himself through the Christian. If that's not what you've been experiencing, please tell me what it is that you are experiencing. You see, that is Christ living by means of us. Or as we like to say here, that is life as God intended. Thanks for tuning in today for giving us a thumbs up for this video, Sub subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed, push that notification bell so that you get notified every time I put a video up. And also in the comment section below, please share your comments. I love hearing from you, your encouragement, your questions, uh, leaving an interactive uh, interaction about the videos. Uh, that helps so much and is such a great encouragement. And if you haven't done so already, uh, check out our website, cross-life.org. There are many great resources there for you. And uh, until next time, my prayer for you is that you will experience life as God intended.